I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. Hello and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation Swampanomics videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. This week, U.S. manufacturing has slipped into a recession. Speaking in Michigan on November 29th to celebrate the manufacturing sector of the Biden economy, the president essentially proclaimed that the industry had never had it so great. There are 735,000 new jobs under his watch and counting, but we will get to this figure in a moment. Two days after his speech, two critical manufacturing measurements were released. First, the Institute for Supply Management's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, declined to 49 in November, worse than the market estimate of 49.8. This was the first contraction in the index since May 2020, as new orders fell, supplier delivery orders growth slowed, employment levels fell, and production eased. The only positive news from that report was input prices rising at a slower pace and supply chain snafus easing. Timothy Fiore, chair of ISM's Manufacturing Business Survey Committee, noted in a statement, quote, Labor management sentiment continued to shift, with a number of panelist companies reducing employment levels through hiring freezes, attrition, and now layoffs. In November, layoffs were mentioned in 14% of employment comments, up from 6% in November and October. Second, the S&P Global Manufacturing PMI declined to 47.7, the first contraction since June 2020. The abysmal reading was caused also by a decline in output, new orders, demand, and new export orders. Employment growth also slowed, while input costs climbed at the slowest rate in two years. In the end, business confidence was low amid inflation and demand woes. According to the S&P Global Report, new orders placed for exports suggest that shipping volumes could fall sharply heading into 2023. Chris Williamson, the chief economist at S&P Global, wrote, quote, If early pandemic lockdowns are excluded, recent months have seen the steepest falls in worldwide export orders and total inflows of new work received by manufacturing since the global financial crisis. Remember, this is in addition to the manufacturing PMIs from regional central banks, be it the Richmond Fed or the New York Fed. Plus, if you looked at the recent numbers, the Chicago PMI just cratered in November. Now, what about President Biden's claims about 735,000 new jobs, although in his actual speech, he shrieked to the heavens about 700 new jobs? As Liberty Nation reported, he may have only overseen 137,000 new manufacturing jobs, which is vastly different from the 735,000 positions. Why? First, because most of these jobs have returned to the economy, which is a more realistic assessment. Moreover, the ADP Research Institute labor report for November highlighted 100,000 lost jobs, which would bring Biden's total to just 37,000 new jobs. Whatever the case may be, Biden's record on manufacturing has been dreadful so far. So what is it? What is happening exactly? Well, a couple of things. The first is that demand is on the decline worldwide. From consumers to commercial establishments, many markets, advanced and developing, are bracing for economic headwinds, or in simple terms, a recession. The second chief component is that central banks everywhere are raising interest rates and slowing down the rate of money supply growth. Without cheap money and liquidity, as this program recently noted when discussing the technology sector, manufacturing will struggle to keep its head above water. Indeed, this is not only concentrated in manufacturing. This is the type of thing that's nearly every aspect of the marketplace. One electrical equipment and appliances executive in the ISM survey may have said it best and simplified what is happening. Quote, overall, things are worsening. 2022 was the year of rampant price inflation. 2023 might be the year of a deteriorating economy. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swampanomics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com, where I discuss Janet Yellen blaming Americans for inflation, the November jobs report, and the overall manufacturing sector. Thank you. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five.
produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone, hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner, joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Mega of authors, friendly. deconstructing the leftist narratives, down. debating the hot, hot topics, topics and remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe you space. Only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five. I'm Andrew Moran, Ellen's economics correspondent. Very, very Death by government. Drain the 